So today's lesson is going to be on how to, in Studio One, create your own drum kit loops using nothing other than your laptop keyboard, your QWERTY keyboard, they sometimes call it, um, to produce those sounds. So no need for a MIDI controller, no need for anything else other than Studio One and your laptop. Um, it doesn't even need to be Studio One Professional like I've got here. It can be the basic Studio One Prime or Artist versions is fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a new song. Um, you can see over here I've got my instruments uh, listed. If you click home, um, some of you, when you open up a new song, you'll get a, a view like this, which is fine. What we're going to need today is the instruments tab. Um, I have some other instruments installed on my laptop, but as standard, uh, you will have a Personas tab. Um, you may need to download some of the other packs in order to get um, more Personas sounds. There's other drum kits available for free on the Personas website. Today, I'm going to use the Impact drums. Um, so there's all these drum kits here. Um, I can use, I can pick any of these, but just for the point of demonstration, I'm going to use the producer pack, the electro producer pack. Here it is, and you get this um, this look here, which looks like one of those physical drum pads that sometimes they use on stage, um, and this is quite consistent in the industry with things like um, Alberton, very popular. You see pad sets like this on the side of um, MIDI keyboards that you can buy these days as well, but we're not going to use that. We're just going to use the laptop keyboard. Now, Personas has made this super easy because all I have to do is press caps lock and it sets up my keyboard as a QWERTY keyboard performing playing machine. So I press caps lock. This little thing comes up and you can see there's part of a keyboard here that is basically designed to represent a, um, you know, a keyboard. Uh, notice that some of the numbers are missing and the reason for that is if you can visualize a piano keyboard where you have two black notes and then three black notes and then two black notes it's meant to represent that so I can press four here and it does absolutely nothing but if I press Q it's going to play our bass drum so it'll take some practice just going through and working out which instrument that's W triggers which thing there's a tambourine um, snare drum there, keep going along, T, snap, so it might just take you some practice to see which keys trigger what sounds, and my flats and sharps are doing nothing in this one, that's absolutely fine. So um, if we focus perhaps on the bass drum and the snare, we'll make up a little bit of a riff for ourselves. Um, let's see how that sounds. I'm going to try and lay that down, and if that's the tempo I want. Da, da, da. One, two, three. So that's my tempo there. Um, with Persona Studio One, if I just click that tempo in the word or on the word tempo there, what it will do is adjust the actual speed. So one, two, three, four, click, click. See how it's adjusting the speed according to how fast I'm clicking. Um, and being OCD, I'm going to type in 140 just to make it a nice round number there. Um, when you're recording something like this, really, you should stick to the metronome. Um, it's just going to make your life so much easier later on down the track. So here I've got, um, I'm going to have a pre-count just to count me in of two bars. Um, I'm going to have a metronome with an accent. The accent gives that little uh, different tone or slightly louder tone on the first beat of each bar and then the other beat. Um, they've just got slightly different sounds there. You can set them to whatever you like. But now when I hit record, what will happen is I'll get two bars of counting um, and then I can start recording. So I'll just confirm where I am. Q, where's my snare? Ah, all right, I've got that. So one, two, three, four. So I've played eight bars. I actually, that last beat I played 
was meant to be at the start of the next bar, I'm going to cut that back. So I just get back my standard tool here. For some reason it shifts onto this one. It's not what I want. Um, and I can see just a little bit of that note clinging on there. So once you've created your loop, there's always going to be a little bit of fine tuning, adjusting, changing to, to get it sounding exactly how you want. Um, so we do this using the editor in Studio One. You can get to the editor two ways. One is by double clicking on the track. Boom, there it is. Or you can use the, with that um, audio event selected, just click the edit button down the bottom here. Boom, and we have an editor. And here's our MIDI notes. All right, so if I play that back, you'll see that go along. Okay, and being human, um, sadly, uh, my beats are not landing spot on with the metronome. If you look closely, you'll see, uh, see he's not quite on the line, he's not quite on the line, he's not quite, he's not, you know. And so there's two ways of looking at it. One is, well, I'll leave those little imperfections because it makes my song sound human. That's one way of looking at it. The other way is, no, I want them to be bang on. This is gonna be like some awesome dubstep techno-y thing where it has to be really robotic. Um, and that is entirely personal taste. What's not personal taste, however, is that one that I put right at the end, which was just, it was meant to be in the next bar. I shouldn't have played it at all. I'm gonna select him and delete him. I don't want it. All right. So if, let's just say you don't want it to be humanized, you want it to be robotic as per electronic music, um, you want to use a tool called Quantize. There are some options called Quantizing up here, um, but to just give you an outline, what Quantize does is it essentially snaps these audio events to the nearest line. So that one would go there, and that one would go there, and that one would go there, and that one would go there, etc. Um, there is some adjustment though. So uh, this is American terminology. So it's going to snap to the nearest sixteenth note here. Um, a quarter note would be a crotchet, so it would snap to the nearest crotchet. This one would snap to the nearest quaver. A sixteenth would be to the nearest semiquaver and this can have a big impact on how successful your quantize is. Um, so if I go for 16th here, or actually just for point of demonstration, notice how when I go between 16th, that's 16th there, and 8th, it removes some of these lines. So eighth, an 8th is a quaver note, and it looks like I'm going for those lines there. Are there any... I'm looking for any audio events that are smack bam in, in the middle where I've perhaps meant to play a quaver. And look, there's one there. So see how it's right in between those two lines? That means that note there, I was probably trying to play that as a semi-quaver or a 16th note. So if I don't want, if I want to keep that and I don't want it to be all messed up, I probably need to quantize to 16. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see all of those notes because I want you to be able to see what happens when I press Control A or select all. You could also do that by selecting all that way. Entirely up to you. Um, now that they're selected, as soon as I press the Q button, it's going to quantize, which is going to snap those notes to the nearest line. Let's just see what that does. Ready and Q. And you can see it's moved them all around. This can be hit and miss, and it depends how accurately you've played it. The more accurate, the better it's going to be. Um, let's just have a listen. Sounding pretty good. Something's gone wrong here. Um, I think that is meant to be on the that start of that bar there. Let's have a listen. Maybe something like that. <laughs> That's not what it was. So you can have these little issues and you've got to work out what you're trying to do. There, there it is. All right, so that sounds good now. Fixed. Oh, and it's, it's not gone well at the end there for me. 
Um, so options are I can go through and move, physically move the notes around. Um, I could say, well, my first half was pretty good and all I've really done is played the whole thing twice. So another option might be, well, the first half was good, the second half, there's some problems at the end. Look, I can pretty much see them there, just looking at it. Um, so I can cut all that out back to here and then just duplicate that bit as a loop. So if I press D, boom, now it's all perfect. And I know what the second half is going to sound like. It's going to be exactly the same as the first half. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and that's how you can make your own drum loops using nothing more than your keyboard. Oh, uh, one thing I should mention actually. So in the QWERTY keyboard here, there is another thing called velocity. Um, so if you were to play this in on a MIDI controller piano, um, those pianos have touch sensitivity, as in it, it can tell how hard I'm pressing the keys. However, your laptop keyboard isn't designed to do that. It can't do that. So I can adjust the velocity. So if you imagine this was a real drum kit, if I'm adjusting the velocity, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adjusting how hard I'm hitting the drums. So for point of example, I'll mute that one. I'll bring in another drum kit. And we'll try doing the same thing, but uh, instead of being a velocity up around 80% where it was, I'll bring it right down and we'll see what that does. You can hear it's quieter straight away. Let's go. So it's just quieter. Um, worth pointing out on some of your higher end MIDI instruments, um, being quieter doesn't just mean being quieter, they will have a different tone color as well. If you can imagine a violin being played more quietly, actually has a different tone color or a different sound to it, to a violin being played louder, other than the velocity itself. Worth pointing that out, um, though I don't think uh, these basic, well, don't quote me on this, I don't think these basic Personas instruments do have that sort of sensitivity or that level. Um, so there you go, creating your own drum MIDI loops using nothing more than a QWERTY keyboard.